So we're going to be having a look at Autodesk Inventor today um, alongside some of the other products inside the Autodesk product design suite. We're going to be going through a workflow starting off at a 2D concept sketch level inside of Autodesk Sketchbook Designer. We're going to take that 2D concept design into AutoCAD, make it a little bit simpler, take out some of the geometry that's not necessarily needed and get it ready to be imported into Autodesk Inventor. Once inside of Autodesk Inventor, we will create a fully parametric 3D model out of that initial 2D concept design. So to start off with, I'm just going to make sure I'm logged into Autodesk Vault. As we can see, I'm inside my Vault client and I've um, created a folder and we're going to be making a, a guitar today, the body for a guitar. We want our guitar to roughly follow this design, which is just a, a Tanglewood acoustic guitar. We quite like this shape, so we want our design to, to roughly follow the body design of this shape. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure I get that file onto my system. I'm not going to choose to check it out, I just literally want to download a copy of that file into my local workspace. We go into my local workspace we can see that I now have that file downloaded I can simply open it up and have a closer look so what I'd like to do is just uh, start off by tracing around this shape and then maybe editing it slightly so I'm going to go into sketchbook designer sketchbook designer is absolutely fantastic for people like me who aren't particularly good at drawing but would like to get some ideas down on paper all I'm going to do is import this image from my Vault workspace. And that imports it as a separate layer that you can see on the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to ensure that that layer is sitting below my vector layer because I want to sketch vector lines on top of it. The reason I want to sketch vector lines and not paint lines is because I want to reuse the lines inside of a CAD application and to do this we need to use vector lines. So all I want to do to start with is literally sketch round the outline of this body. To do this I'm simply going to use the pen tool. Select my pen tool, ensure that I'm on a vector layer first of all, select my pen tool and select the curve point mode. What I want to do is just make sure that I've got my attribute editor open. This enables me to go in and up the size of my brush. I just want to make sure that my brush is nice and thick, just so that I'm able to see it nice and easily. Six should be absolutely fine. What I can do now is simply just start clicking with my mouse around the outside of this guitar body. What this will start to do is it will literally start to place some lines over that existing image that we checked out of our vault. Now at this stage I don't have to be too accurate. I can literally just click to place down the lines. Once I've got to this point, if I want to, I can select any of these previous points and move them ever so slightly. You'll notice that this also affects the line before and after the point that you are moving. It keeps its, uh, its properties intact. Once we've got something that looks about right, we can press the little tick. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. You know, it's just like in CAD, I can hover over a point, and that means that I can snap to that point. And once again, I can just simply start sketching or tracing over the other side. And once again, for people like me who aren't particularly gifted in the arts department, um, this really does make a big difference to what you can do with concept designs. Um, those of you that are gifted with being able to draw, this product works fantastic with Wacom tablets just to be able to draw freehand using this tool, the freehand curve stroke mode. So once again, once I've got that line finished, I'm just going to manually move some of these points around just to ensure that I'm kind of in the right area with the line. Once I'm happy, 
I'm just going to select the tick. What we need to do now is add a couple of straight lines from this point inwards a little bit and then down to this point. That's where the neck is going to attach onto the guitar body. So you have a slightly, a slightly flat section of the, of the body. So I'm going to put a tick in there. Okay, so we've got the rough outline of our, our guitar. From here, if we want to, we can turn off that initial guitar shape. And we can start to, uh, to change this ever so slightly. So we only wanted the rough shape as an outline for our guitar because we liked the shape. But we want to be able to perhaps change the rest of it somehow. And we're going to make a slightly obscure but uh, different design with a slightly off-centered ellipse instead of a, a circle for the sound hole. And we're also, also going to use the vector tools just to create a bridge for the strings. Once again, I'm just going to make something that looks a little bit different. Once I've finished with that line, I can choose the line selection tools to select, group edit and move. To tidy this up a little bit, I can take any of these lines and simply use the fillet tool just to round off these edges. I'm just going to do that here. Like so, and like so. So that's about right. Let's say to finish this off, we want to add a fingerboard um, where the fingers would sit just below the strings here. Once again, I'm just going to use a combination of straight lines and curved lines. Let's just put a straight line there. Maybe have a curved line from there to there and then maybe finish that off with a straight line. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is just a concept stage, but we can go back in and pick up on any parts of those lines at any point and edit them like so. So once we've got something that we're kind of happy with, let's just add some shading. I'm not worried too much about the neck Today we just want to design the body. So I'm going to go to my fill tool. I'm going to come down the bottom and I can see that I have a wood and tiles area for filling. I'm just going to literally select a simple wooden texture and place it on the guitar body just like that. Very quickly and very easily you can see that you can get a nice effect without too much issue. If we want to we can move this gradient around to get different effects. We can even go as far as to add separate points and again move them around. In this instance to change the grain of the wood. I'm just going to add a couple in just to make it look quite cool. I'm quite a big fan of uh, these abstract looking designs. Once I've done that I'm going to select my standard gradient tool, go to my colors, and just select maybe a, a dark grayish color to fill the inside of the hole. A little bit grayer. I'm going to select perhaps a bit of a ramp to put on this section which just does a, a gradient ramp for you so almost like a sunburst. That looks quite cool. And then finally let's do a similar sort of tortoise shell sunburst on the bridge at the back there. Something along those lines. I'm quite happy with that. By all means it's not perfect but it's given me a half decent result. So from here I've got some 2D geometry. I've got some lines that I might want to take across into an application to create a parametric 3D model out of this. The first thing I'm going to do is just save this away just in case I need to edit it again. And now I'm just going to put it on my desktop because Sketchbook Designer doesn't use Vault. And I'm just going to call this Guitar Body Design. you notice that Sketchbook staves and recognizes a DWG format, so they're fully interchangeable between all of the Autodesk applications. Once I've saved that, 
I'm simply going to go to the file drop down, go to export, and say that I want to export my curves, so vector layer one, to a DWG format. This time I am going to put this into my Vault workspace, and I'm just going to save that as guitar export DWG. I'm going to click save, ensure that I select millimeters. I'm not too worried about the size because I'm going to add separate dimensions later on using Inventor. So I'm just going to press OK. That's going to save that away and export those vectors ready to import into AutoCAD. Now that we have the basic shape for our guitar body, we want to be able to open this up inside of a CAD application, a physical CAD application and not a concept sketching application. What I'm going to do, I could just import this straight into Inventor, but from previous experience, sometimes when you open up these files inside of Inventor, you get far too many points on the splines. So as you can see, I've opened the file directly into AutoCAD. Because it's a sketch, it goes directly into paper space and not model space. And we can see by selecting that we do have quite a few points on each of the lines. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but there's still quite a few. All I'm going to do is select that guitar, cut it, go into model space, and paste it at 0, 0. I should do a zoom extent just to get to the guitar. I'm just going to select everything and just place it onto layer 0. This just makes things easier when importing into Inventor. So in my case here, I've not got too bad a design. There's not too many uh, points to the spline. Sometimes you get far too many, and inside Inventor that causes big problems when you come to extrude. So all I'm going to do is show you how you would get around that. If you go into a 3D modeling environment with inside of AutoCAD and go to Surfaces, you get the ability to rebuild a line, essentially, or a curve. If I select Rebuild, I can select one of, the, one of the curves on this design. So this half of the guitar initially has 41 vertices. Again, that's not too bad. What I want to see, and do if, see if I can do is lower that to 20 vertices with a degree of 5. I'm going to say Preview. And as we can see, we get pretty much an identical result. It's flagging up an issue around here, um, but we can fix that later. So if I wanted to, I could hit return. And as you can see, we can't tell much difference between the two. And we have a line that if we select now, you can see there's far less points, which makes things even easier when we come to make this into a 3D model. So again, if I do the same on the other side, Choose Rebuild, select my edge, select how many vertices I would like to try and go down to, and the degree. You'll notice that I'm going up on the degree, even though I'm going down on the vertices count. That's generally what you'll have to do when you start to get more and more vertices. Just try and up that degree a little bit, which will help the, um, the flow around some of these sharper corners. So I'm just going to preview that. We can see that it's quite similar although a little bit different. Once again, I'm quite happy with the result. That's fine for me. So I'm going to press enter. Looking at the ellipse, it's not going to cause any problems. This has got quite a few points on it, but I'm actually going to remodel the bridge inside of Inventor as it will be easier. So I'm not too fussed about taking that or the fingerboard over. So from this point, I'm quite happy. So I'm just going to put a save. Once I've saved it, I'm just going to check this into my vault. Let's just give it some comments. Once you've given it those comments, press OK. And that will be checked into my vault ready to use within Inventor. So I can close down AutoCAD now and I can open up Vault just to ensure if I give it a refresh that 
under guitar, I now have both the shape and my export, which is ready to be imported into Inventor. We're now going to open up Autodesk Inventor. So using that geometry that we created inside of Sketchbook Designer and edited inside of AutoCAD, we can start to build a fully parametric 3D model. So the digital design and digital prototyping process has already begun. We've created a conceptual model or a conceptual sketch of what we think the design is going to look like or what we would like the design to look like. That can be very detailed and very pretty in regards to visualization. Because of that, the digital prototyping stage commences. We've then shared data between two separate applications, between Sketchbook Designer and AutoCAD. We've taken that data in, we've modified it to make it easier to understand and more realistic. And with that data, we've now saved it and we're ready to import it into Inventor. So the digital prototyping workflow continues. So we're just going to log into our vault. And essentially what we want at the end of this is to have a fully detailed and realistic looking 3D parametric digital prototyping model that could be used for visualization to be able to see your product before it's real or even for simulation to be able to simulate your product before it's real. So I'm going to choose to open from Vault. Go to my Designs folder and my Guitar folder with Inside Vault. And with this DWG, I'm going to select Options and say that rather than open it, we would like to import it. After pressing open, it's going to ask me if I would like to check the file out. I'm going to say no. We're not actually going to edit that DWG in any way, so we don't need to check it out. We, can only, we only need to use it read only. Let's just follow the wizard through. So we're importing an AutoCAD file, so we click next. It's important at this point to note, regardless of whether you've used AutoCAD or not, you use the same process. So you can import directly from Sketchbook Designer into Inventor using the same way. On this page we get a preview of what it's going to import. You don't have to, but generally I like to uncheck all and just put a window around the geometry that I would like to import. This is just something I've always done. You don't have to do it. Um, I just find it best practice. Taking a few minutes to look at this next section, it's asking us what we would like to do. What do we want to import and where do we want to send it? So we're going to look at everything in that file and import it. So if there's any 3D data, which there isn't, but it would essentially take 3D surfaces and 3D wires. It's detected millimeters and it's going to constrain any endpoints. Now this point here is quite important. If you've got any vertex or vertices within your sketch that are pretty much touching but not actually constrained together, then you won't be able to extrude them and work with them inside of Inventor without modifying them and fixing where they're not constrained. So it's always a good idea to tick that box. So the destination for 2D data, which is what we're worried about, is we want to start a new part and project any wires to our sketch to a 2D sketch. Press finish and Inventor will think about things for a couple of seconds and eventually import us into a new part with our guitar geometry. In my template I have an iLogic rule set up which just prompts me as a designer to ensure that I enter specific eye properties at the start of a part. It just saves me from accidentally saving a model without enter entering those important eye properties. So let's just enter the title of this part. It's going to be guitar body. Let's enter the part number. Let's enter a description. Let's enter a project. That completes my eye properties check rule, um, and we now know that I'm working with properties that are fully filled out. So, if we just have a look at the model browser, we can see that we have two sketches sketch one, which is empty, and sketch zero, which contains 
all of our imported geometry. What I like to do is essentially delete sketch 1 and rename sketch 0 Let me rename sketch 0 to sketch 1. Let's just edit the sketch and just have a little look what's going on. I'm just going to add in some constraints just to constrain this part up. So we want that line to be vertical and this line here to be horizontal. So I'm going to put a horizontal and a vertical constraint on those two lines to lock them into place. I'm going to select a perpendicular constraint, so a right angle constraint, and just ensure that this line or this controlling line of the spline is perpendicular to this line here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. From there, I'm simply just going to add a few more vertical constraints in just to ensure that everything is running nice and smoothly. So on the left hand side of the base, I just need to try and find my starting point, which is just here. So that's the origin of the sketch. I'm just going to create a controlling line of that vertical and just make sure I've got tangencies on both sides of the spline. So from here, let's just put a dimension on just to see how big this is. It's going to be far bigger than what we need. And the reason for that is that we didn't actually change the size of the paper with inside Sketchbook Designer. That was because we knew that we'd want to change the dimensions inside of Inventor. So let's just zoom in and add an overall dimension. I'm just going to select the origin point of the actual uh, guitar itself and the base of the neck and put in a controlling dimension for the size. I'm going to go with roughly 480 mil and hit enter. You'll see that because I've constrained this correctly, the inventor's actually scaled the whole model down for me. The only thing it hasn't done, unfortunately, is scale down the size of these lines on the dimension. So all I'm going to do is just delete that dimension and replace it. It just saves having a dimension line that's absolutely massive when it's not needed. At this point, I'm just going to select the whole model and choose to move it using the center of the sound hole as a base point. And I'm just going to move it literally to the origin of the part itself. If you have trouble doing like that, like I am for some reason, what you can do is literally put in a point that will snap to the origin, even though the move didn't. Once that snapped, just literally lock it in place and then try your move once more. So once again, I'm going to select the center of the hole as the base point and just move it onto the center point of the origin. So I'm going to right click and finish the sketch. We can see now that we have a completed sketch with an overall dimension. So this is now correctly scaled to roughly the right size that I want the guitar. From here, I'm going to choose to extrude. You'll notice if I hover over any of the geometry created in Sketchbook and modified in AutoCAD, that it will pick up on absolutely everything. So from here, we can quite simply say that we want to extrude all of these faces up by around about 75 mil. This creates us the base of our guitar. What we need to do now is start adding some detail. So let's just have a look at that sketch, right click and turn the visibility back on. What we need to be able to do is reuse that sound hole, but we need to reuse that sound hole on this side. Otherwise, we'd have a left-handed guitar when actually we want a right-handed guitar because I'm right-handed. All I'm going to do is choose to create a sketch on this side of the guitar body, choose to project my geometry 
and select that sound hole. Once we've done that, we can finish the sketch, turn the visibility of the previous sketch off and literally extrude that new sketch geometry as a cut by anything really, doesn't that matter? But let's go for 10 millimeters. From there, we want to be able to shell the body out. Acoustic guitars, which is what this is, are hollow on the inside. Um, generally, they are made as three separate pieces of wood, but in this instance, we're just modeling up as one solid, but it needs to at least be shelled. From here, let's select the shell tool, select this bottom face and the side face here, and let's say that we want this to be five millimeters thick. We press return, and Vince will create the shell. And if I rotate round, we can see that now we have a fully shelled inside body of the guitar. So we've made a slight deliberate mistake. We need to actually add some detail before the shell. Obviously with Inventor, this isn't too much of a problem because we have the flexibility to either move the end of part up so now we're actually working at a point before that shell was added. Or we can simply add extra geometry in underneath the shell and drag and drop it above the shell. In this instance, I'm just going to move the end of part up. We're going to create a sketch on this top face. And we're just going to take a slight indent out of that body. So we're just going to go roughly 15 mils by about 65. And all we want to do is rather than have a very, very thin and very, very sharp edged piece of wood here, we're just going to make that a lot more structurally friendly. So let's just finish that sketch and just extrude this down. so slightly as a cut and it only needs to be a few millimeters. From here I can literally drag the end of part back down and as you can see it re-adds the shell for me without any problems at all. So the next stage of this is to start adding some detail onto this part. So perhaps what we need to do is decipher whether we want to have a fully acoustic guitar or an acoustic electric guitar. If this is an acoustic electric guitar, we'll generally need a hole down the bottom edge here to add a nine volt battery to run the electrics. We'd also need to add a hole at the top here where the electrics would sit. I quite like the idea of having an electric acoustic guitar, so let's create those holes. So what Inventor can't do is sketch on these round edges or these curved edges. So what we need to do is add some work planes to give ourselves a flat edge to work off. Because we moved the guitar to the origin originally, we can nice and quickly take a, a, a flat work plane off the origin and drop it roughly into the right place. It doesn't need to be exact. I can choose to create a sketch on this flat edge choose to look at that edge and then start adding some geometry. So let's just add a rectangular slot for a nine volt battery. So let's just put a couple of dimensions on. We'll just say around about 40 by 20 mil sounds about right. And let's just add couple of bits of projected geometry just so we can add some controlling dimensions and let's say we want 50 mil from that point and we also want to be sat directly in the center like so. so let's just have a little rotate round that looks about right so all I need to do is finish the sketch, choose to extrude as a cut, and we just need to 
drag this by eye through to the distance required, or I can say extrude to the selected face and body, and just look through the sound hole there and select the inner face. We can see that that adds the hole through the piece of wood. At this point, I'm done with this work plane, so I'm just going to turn the visibility on. Let's do the same thing on the top edge, where we need a hole to mount the electrics for this guitar. So things like the volume control and the tone and the pitch. So once again, let's create a work plane coming off the XZ plane this time. And let's just drag that up roughly in the right place and choose to create a sketch on that work plane. Once again, I'm just going to use a rectangle and roughly put the shape in. I'm not 100% sure of the dimensions, but I'm going to go with around about 55 mil by 40 mil. Let's just up that to 60. From there, once again, I'm just going to project the geometry, make sure that this is placed in the center of the body, and let's say it's going to be roughly about 75 mil from the end of the body. Finish the sketch, choose extrude and either drag all the way through as a cut or we can say cut to selected face and select that inner edge. That cuts out the material and gives you the hole ready for the electrics. Let's turn the visibility of that work plane off. So at this point we're starting to get something that is very nicely resembling the body of an acoustic guitar. Two more things that we're going to do before continuing is just make a little plastic cover for both of these holes. We're not adding the electrics into this guitar, that's done by another department. But what we want to do is because this is going to be manufactured first and then with the electrics added later, we just want a nice cover just to go over these holes just to keep the inside dust free once we've got a cover over the sound hole. So all I'm going to do is start placing this into an assembly. So let's just save this part as a guitar body. Once this is saved, I'm just going to simply close the file and choose to start a new assembly. Once again, my iProperties check comes up using iLogic. I can just enter the title, the part number, the description, and the project. From this point, I'm going to choose to place, select my guitar body, and place it into the assembly. Before I go any further, I'm just going to save that straight down into my workspace. So from this point, let's just add one of the dust covers. So because we've got a nice smooth surface here, it's actually going to be quite complicated to model this exactly. But what I can do is use a technique um, with surfaces to get this done for me. So all I'm going to do is select to create a new component. Give it a name and choose to place the component. Once again my eye properties check is going to come up. Put the information in here and once we're in choose to create a 3D sketch because with creating a 3D sketch we can include geometry from the initial part. With that geometry I can choose to create a patch. This will simply put a patched surface over that geometry that I've selected. With this patched surface, I can choose to thicken. 
by five millimeters because that's the thickness of the wood on the guitar. Make sure it's going the correct location and click OK. Turn the visibility of the boundary patch off and let's change the material to ABS plastic. And we'll go for a nice smooth black. Let's do the same on the other side. Create a new part. Once again, enter my eye properties. Description. And the project. Once again, we're going to create a 3D sketch. Choose to include some geometry, use a boundary patch on that geometry and then thicken that boundary patch by the desired distance. Once again we should turn off the visibility of our boundary patch, change the material to ABS plastic and just give it a, a black finish. While we're changing the materials, let's just go into our guitar body and change the material of this. Now, I don't have any materials directly inside of Inventor that are absolutely perfect for this. What we're going to do is just find one that's near enough. So we've got birch, cherry, quite like the look of cherry, but what I want to do is just edit it ever so slightly. So I'm going to go into my materials browser or my appearance browser. From here, we can see all of the materials that have been placed into the component. Okay. So what we can do is pick our cherry material and we can choose to edit it. In this case, all I want to do is rotate the image round so the grain is running down the length of the guitar body. So let's just edit the image and choose to rotate by 90 degrees. That gives me the exact result that I'm after, so that is absolutely fine. So we've got our two gut dust covers created and we have our guitar body pretty much done. The only other thing I want to do is just add some construction ribs inside of the guitar body and then just add our guitar bridge. So just double click the guitar to edit it and I'm going to choose to create a 2D sketch on the bottom inside face. I'm going to right click and choose to slice graphics and just add some sketch geometry. I'm not going to be too accurate with the ribs. I kind of know that I want two vertically All I need to do is make sure that the sketch lines, make sure that's horizontal. All we need to do is make sure the sketch lines are wider than the guitar itself. Let's just add a few like so, and that's probably absolutely fine. So I'm going to finish my sketch. I must practice what I preach. Let's make sure that those rib lines definitely longer than the guitar body itself. From there, finish the sketch, choose my rib tool. We want to select parallel to sketch plane and choose the night. From the profile, I'm just going to go in and select my sketch lines. You start to see we get previews. We want the thickness to be probably about 5 millimeters and the height to be around 10 millimeters. From there we'll get some nice simple structural ribs on the part. That's okay. We can see on the inside there that we've just got some structural ribs just to make this a little bit stronger. 
So finally, let's just add another part for our bridge. So let's create the part. Choose to place it. Once again, enter my eye properties. So let's just create a nice simple rounded slot like so with dimension of about 90 by about 20. And let's just, as I've said, make sure that we align with that origin point, which again has disappeared, so we can just place a point down, and make sure that point's locked, vertically align, and horizontally align, so we're in the center. Once we've done that, we just need to edit this extrusion, so it picks up on the correct geometry, and we just need to edit the fillet, so that picks up on the correct geometry. From here, we can just simply say that we want to constrain the XZ plane on the bridge to the XZ plane on the guitar body. Now we simply need to say that we would like to flush that section of the bridge with that section of the body, but then offset it by around about 250 millimeters. So we can see now that that's caused a few problems with these parts that weren't constrained in. Constrained in. So let's go ahead and constrain them. All I'm going to do is go into this part and add a couple of axes. As I said earlier, because this is a slightly obscure shape, they can be a little bit tricky to work with. So I'm just going to add some axes in on the part and on the guitar body. And what I can do is lock those in place with constraint. Like so. Then if I select select uh, faces and edge priority, so I'm only selecting faces and edge, choose the assemble tool, pick up on this face, it will lock my dust cover into place. Let's just do the same thing very quickly on the other side. Select component priority to select a whole component so we can edit it. Add a work axis on both ends. This is just because it's a strange shape so it gives us something to work with. Do the same thing on the guitar body. So select an axis on the, exactly the two same places that you want to constrain it to. Finish the edit, use your constraint tool to do a standard mate on both of the axes, change your selection priority to faces and edges, zoom in and select, you might need to move it out of the way first, like so, faces and edges, select our face, choose assemble, and then select the corresponding edge on the part. I'm going to go to view and turn off my work features. Go back to my home view. Pretty much done. Just got two more details to add. And that's just a fillet on the top and bottom edges. So let's edit this part. Add a fillet around the top and around the bottom of about 5mm. And let's just say that we want to detail and spray this slightly differently. So those fillets, the faces of those fillets will be masked and then finished with a slightly different finish. And let's use that walnut material from earlier. So there we have a nicely designed 3D fully parametric acoustic guitar body 
inside of Autodesk Inventor. So from here, I'm not too fussed about creating a drawing. All I want to do is just send this into a visualization. Um, so we're going to use a sweet workflow and just send this directly to Autodesk Showcase. What this will do is it will take my model from within Autodesk Inventor with all of the materials that it's got applied to it and it will open it up directly inside of Autodesk Showcase inside an environment with those or closely matched materials and give you a very realistic looking presentation feel. This makes it very easy for designers to be able to create visualizations relatively easily without too much hassle. Certainly easier than, uh, than using products that are very specialized such as 3ds Max which will give you better results if you spend the time putting into the software um, but if you just want something out very quickly Showcase will give you that result without too much stress. So here we are inside of Showcase. As you can see it's taken our model from Inventor and it's applied some, uh, some nice looking lighting and some slightly more realistic looking materials than what we had inside of Inventor. What we can do is just literally put this into an environment. So let's say that we would like to see our guitar. Perhaps let's just uh, sit it on a conference room table. Apart from the orientation is completely wrong. Let's just zoom out a little bit. There we go. So you can see your guitar on top of the table. Or if you'd like a proper 3D environment, if you should want to, you could put your guitar in the middle of a grass field. So just load up the next environment. As you can see, it places your model, in this instance, within a full 3D environment, not only updating the lighting, the shadows, the reflections, but also doing it in real time as well. Let's just put it back into a standard white, uh, white room type environment. As you can see, you get a very nice result. If you should want to change the materials inside of Showcase, you can. Let's just select a, uh, an object, press M for materials, and just find one that suits. For example, if you don't want a wooden finish but want a sprayed guitar, we could spray on here a nice hammer red, like so, or perhaps select absolutely everything and put a nice gloss black. Some of these guitars nowadays come in a nice painted gloss black. And to get a render or a, a, an image out of this, it's as simple as going to File, choosing to publish an image, selecting your resolution, Choose if you want any anti-aliasing and just publish that image. Let's just save that away in my Vault workspace. Just to get a simple render, only takes a couple of seconds and there we have a nice render. But the final thing to do here is just get back into Inventor, make sure that we check all of these parts into Vault so they're ready to be worked on edited etc etc as necessary and let's also dip into vault and just make sure that we also put that render in there as well vault will automatically go in do all the hard work put the categories on there assign life cycle states and revisions so all i need to do is select my guitar and let's just say that we would like to change the state to for review, send that to a review board 
and allow them to comment on the design. So that's about it from me. Hopefully that's been useful. Um, we've gone through a digital prototyping workflow using Product Design Suite. So we've gone from a concept sketch design in Sketchbook all the way through AutoCAD and through Autodesk Inventor to get um, a realistic looking presentation visualization at the end and a fully parametric 3D model which could be used for simulations, etc, etc.